History. It's meant to be made. It's meant to be rewritten. It's meant to set the pace and define the outlook for the future. In Charlotte, North Carolina, history was made in 1949 when Charlotte College was established. The two-year institution would serve as the pacer for what over the course of 68 years has become an institution that not only continues to rewrite history, but also define itself as a leader in the North Carolina educational system. From Charlotte College to UNC Charlotte, the city of Charlotte has found a gold mine that has yet to stop providing value. With World War II just ending and the GI Bill in effect to help provide soldiers the right to an education, North Carolina opened the Charlotte Center of the University of North Carolina in 1946. Fast forward three years and with the state beginning to close the centers, the Charlotte Center was taken over by the local school district and officially became known as Charlotte College in 1949. While originally holding classes at Central High School near Uptown Charlotte, enrollment would increase and require the acquisition of a permanent location. In 1958, Charlotte College became state-supported, and in 1961, the location that is now UNC Charlotte became the permanent location for Charlotte College. A small and humble beginning for what has now become one of the largest universities in North Carolina, Charlotte College consisted of the two original buildings, Kennedy and Macy, and a barn that would serve as the student hangout before the Cone Center was established in 1963. It was 1963 when Charlotte College's outlook to the future began to make strides. Charlotte College went from a two-year institution to a four-year institution before joining the North Carolina educational system in 1965, and since 1972, the university has been known as the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. The transition from Charlotte College to what is now UNC Charlotte involved a lot of work from a lot of people. It was a process that took years to bring to fruition and at points struggled to stay alive, but one individual became the face and focal point to the history and success found at UNC Charlotte. Known as the founder of UNC Charlotte, Bonnie Cohn's legacy goes further than any proprietary title. Miss Cohn was an integral part in the formation of Charlotte College. She was an integral part in bringing collegiate education to Charlotte, and most importantly, she was an integral part to the history that generations of 49ers have made. During the early years through the transition from Charlotte College to UNC Charlotte, there were struggles and tribulations, but where many would have backed down, Miss Cohn understood the importance and was not content with stopping before her master plan was achieved. I had to stay alive first, because 49 was that critical year. We worked hard and got us a bill passed and, uh, you know, prepared and introduced and passed to stay alive. This great populous region, the missing ingredient for a great city, we felt was a university. We knew we had to have one. Miss Cohn's perseverance paid dividends as Charlotte College was set to flourish. With Kennedy and Macy set to become the first buildings on a permanent campus, a vision was becoming a reality. But I came out here, just had to come look at it. Just, it had been approved, you know. Goodness sakes alive, Ethan Thompson's men were out here, the bulldozers were going everywhere, breaking up the land, getting ready to start the construction. I went back to town to get to a phone and called Mr. Adkins, who was chairman of our board, and uh, I said, Murray, you promised me we could have a groundbreaking. Waited all these years, and he said, yes, you, you can have it, plan it for Monday morning. Just like that, Friday morning, plan it for Monday morning. So I planned it for Monday morning. But while Charlotte College possessed the entities of Kennedy and Macy, it was the student hangout at the time that proved to be the most popular location on the Charlotte College campus. We, we, we kind of referred to that as our first uh, university center building, our college center building in those days, because uh, that's where we had our first picnics, you know, and, and it, it had, the uh, barn had a, a built-in stairwell to go to the second level. And it was all floor at second level, and the students would, would have little dances up there. Bonnie Cohn possessed an endearing and caring personality. She showed through numerous ways that she cares about the advancement for UNC Charlotte. Although small in physical stature, Miss Cohn possessed one of the biggest hearts in all of North Carolina. Her love for the students, faculty, and physical campus has endeared her to the Charlotte community for life. Well, I'll remember them, that's, that's for sure. because. Oh, there's never a day that I don't remember some of you. You know, that what you're accomplishing and what you're doing in life, this is my greatest joy. It's this institution, the people it served through the years are, are very important to me. It's special, you're all <clears throat> special. 
Bonnie Cohn passed away in 2003, and while she may no longer be with us physically, her spirit will always remain a part of UNC Charlotte. Miss Cohn enjoyed the students, she enjoyed the botanical gardens, but Miss Cohn also had another passion sports. by coaches, he'll touch home plate, and that's going to do it here in the first of this doubleheader Saturday. With two seconds, Carter Circus shot in the lane at the shot clock buzzer. Every athletic program has memorable moments. Moments that define the legacies of not only the individuals, but also the teams they play for. For Charlotte, each of those moments etches in another symbol of a storied history. An athletic program younger than many others, the Charlotte 49ers over the years have made a name for themselves through conference championships and tournament runs. One of the most iconic teams in Charlotte athletics history was the 1977 men's basketball team. This would be the only time Charlotte basketball would make it to the Final Four of the NCAA Tournament, and the transition from Cinderella team to legitimate contender was an awe-inspiring moment for Charlotte's legacy. The basketball team at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, they're called the Mean Green, will play tomorrow in the NCAA semifinals in Atlanta. We say that matter-of-factly, but in Charlotte, it's anything but that. Ten seconds to go. Scott, this may be it. It is! You know, show the Charlotte's right up there with everybody else. Everybody, you know, like they said they couldn't do it, and they went right out and did it. This was a beautiful city. Uh, it just needs something like we've had happen here to wake up people to realize that. Over the years, Charlotte has been part of numerous conferences, including the Sun Belt, Metro, Atlantic 10, and back to Conference USA for its second stint in 2013. Through these transitions, no matter the competition, Charlotte has always played competitively in all sports. However, while numerous sports boasted postseason tournament berths after the 1977 men's basketball team, it would be 2011 before the university would truly have the opportunity to taste a national championship again. The 2011 men's soccer team was a special one. They were fighters, and even when the games got tough, they always found a way to pull out a victory. The 49ers would enter the NCAA tournament as an at-large team after falling in the A-10 conference tournament. Charlotte being a fighter all year was not surprised by the regional placement of their team. The 49ers were given a home match in the first round against Furman before playing on the road the rest of their run. The 49ers would defeat UAB, Akron, UConn, and Creighton before setting up an ultimate championship showdown with in-state North Carolina. While the 49ers would fall to the Tar Heels 1-0, the run by the men's soccer team symbolized a coming together of the student body, some had not seen since the 1977 men's basketball team. Now with Charlotte football begun and the athletics at Charlotte set to continue to grow, the campus of UNC Charlotte and the nation of Niners that inhabit it will continue to grow as well. With a diverse culture and the campus experiencing growth each year, UNC Charlotte has become a leader in diversity amongst other North Carolina schools. Throughout the history of UNC Charlotte, numerous people have staked their claim as part of Niner Nation, and each individual helped to bring something different to the table. Whether it was the Miss UNC Charlotte pageants that were held or the growth and diversity of Greek life on campus, UNC Charlotte has always prided itself on the expanded culture of Niner Nation. Student organizations help to fuel a university. They get the student body involved. Over the years, UNC Charlotte has seen a variety of organizations created to help fuel the growth of campus. 
Organizations like broadcast media and the newspaper have evolved over the years to keep up with the demand of students, while other organizations like choir and theater have ingrained themselves into a rich history of former and current members. Niner Nation will continue to grow and different members will continue to cycle through. But one thing remains. Each Niner represents a piece of history, a piece of gold yet to be discovered in this vast gold mine, a piece of the future, with the future of UNC Charlotte shining brighter than ever, reflecting on the past as special. Because without the trials and tribulations faced early on, without the perseverance of Bonnie Cohn, and without the athletics program and student organizations being a part of the growth of this campus, we may not have ended up as golden as we are today.